I work in the digital media lab here at the libraries, and I'm also on the Twitch stream. And with me today, I have some representatives of the Musical Empowerment Club here at NC State. Um, and I'll let them kind of explain their club. Um, then we're going to run through some videos after that, uh, some of the students that they teach. And then after that, I'm going to ask them a few questions that are relevant. And you guys can feel free to ask questions anytime during uh, either the videos or the stream in the chat. And uh, yeah, go ahead and get started. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Awesome. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Madison, and I am the senior co-president of Musical Empowerment this year. Um, and if you all want to introduce yourselves as well. <laughs> I'm Benjamin. I am on the teacher relations team, and I've also been teaching with Musical Empowerment for a good little while. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Bobby. And I am a second year graduate student in the Master's of Liberal Arts Studies program. And I am a Healthy American co-president student. Yeah, um, so Musical Empowerment is a nonprofit organization that offers free one-on-one -on -one music lessons to uh, K through 12 students in the um, under-resourced areas. So for what that means for our chapter, because um, we have several chapters across the um, state of North Carolina, um, we serve students in the greater Raleigh area. And we are a, a student-run organization, so uh, we're all volunteers here. Um, so we're on the teacher, um, not teacher relations, you're on the teacher relations, Benjamin. <laughs> um, we're in the... Um, what would you call us? The leadership team. Um, mm -hmm. So basically we kind of are the behind the scenes folk, um, just making sure that everything runs smoothly and we compare like our teachers and our students and everything, so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, musical empowerment, it's like there's the whole national umbrella of musical empowerment. We're the chapter that exists at NC State. There are seven or eight? Yes, seven. The numbers changed in a bit. Chapters at the moment. <laughs> And they're spread out mostly in North Carolina, because that's where it started, back in UNC. And there's also a chapter in Dartmouth and Hunter College. So yes. we're a growing organization, but we're the second. We're the second most original here at NC State. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Cool. Um, so it sounds like you guys do a lot of work in the community, which is, um, that's really, that's really awesome. Um, so I think uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show some videos of your guys' students, and uh, you guys can kind of see the progress that they made, and I think it should be super interesting. <laughs> Hi, Claire. <laughs> Claire just joined. All right, here we go. Okay, what is your name? Israel. Israel, thank you for standing still. What do you love about music? I like the boom, boom, boom. You love the boom, boom, boom. How about Nico? He's your teacher. What do you like about Nico? I like it when, when, I, I like it, I like because, I like him because he's fun and nice. And, and he knows things. He knows things. And so, why do you love the drums? Because they're my favorite instrument. Because they're your favorite instrument? Why? Because sometimes they're blue and that's my favorite color. Okay, good job.
Hi guys, my name is Amelia and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Today I'm going to be playing Young Hunter in the song I wrote called Let the Flowers Bloom. Here's Young Hunter. That was Young Hunter, and um, here's Let the Flowers Bloom. Let the flowers bloom. I hope you guys liked the songs and thank you for listening. Bye! Hi, my name is Onima Kathleen from Raleigh, North Carolina. Today I'm going to be playing Ode to Joy and Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Here's Ode to Joy. to join here is Supercon Friday Stay Exodus. And that was super cool for us to expand on And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you like the songs. Bye. Awesome. That was amazing. Yeah, that was really that was really impressive. Um. Okay. So that was. That was really cool. Just even seeing like the progression from like just the one semester, that was that was really really impressive. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and um, transition into asking questions now. And if you guys in the audience have any questions, feel free to ask it in the chat, um, and I can ask them here over Zoom. Um, so I guess I'll start things off right off the bat. Um, how many teachers do you guys have? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> 
So I tried to count looking at our list. We're around 20 or so between our active teachers right now and new ones we're onboarding. Yeah, gotcha. um, we've had uh, some who've been working with students for like almost four years um, and then some who've just been paired like in the last like semester or like last year. So we have like a whole wide range. <laughs> and we Gosh, also good. have students that are doing virtual and in person. Nice. Is there like um is there like an ideal number or is it just like as many people that want to join can or is it like uh, <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> it's always just a cool. balance between how many teachers we can get who are willing to put the time in to be a teacher and how many students we can find who are interested in joining our program and absolutely it's just the the supply and demand curve of that this isn't a market <laughs> but it kind of is of of how we can get the most people doing interesting music things between finding more teachers and finding more students. That's really our limit. Gotcha. Um, so talking about the students, um, there was a question that popped up in the chat. How like old are most of your students? Is there like a specific age range or is it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we get a lot of younger students. We don't tend to have too many older students. Um, I do know that we just paired a teacher who is um, teaching a, someone who's in 12th grade right now. Um, so that's really interesting just to see like that kind of diversity with that. But I would say like mostly all elementary school is our main. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Was it a just kind of like, a, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> a lot of our recruiting happens in elementary schools and middle schools, just because we know that our teachers are mostly here for four years because most people start here when they're freshmen. Everybody does. Some people join later and that's cool too. Um, so we generally recruit from middle schoolers and elementary schools because we know they'll still want to pursue the instrument for that long. Um, gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes, yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, so I guess, uh, that kind of relates to this, uh, this next question I'm going to ask, but is there like a specific, like demographics, like specifically for the students that you guys Either, I mean, I guess you guys can really choose, but like who are interested or is it, is it all just kind of like sign up if you want to? Um, we usually go off of um, if they get free and reduced uh, lunch. Um, so if they have like, if they demonstrate a need of financial, um, if they demonstrate a financial need, those are the people that uh, we usually have um, as our priority that we sign up for. But um, if, if other stu students are like able to like, you know, if they want to join um, through the schools that we kind of outreach to, um, we still like have them join as well. Or we gotcha. like have them apply. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, cool, okay, so I guess going back to uh, being a teacher, how does one like sign up to be a teacher and like what are the requirements with becoming a teacher and all of that yeah um i guess i can take this one <laughs> um so we basically start off with an application um so if you look at our uh, website we have um, our applications open there otherwise uh, we have interest meetings where teachers can apply as well um, after we review your application um We'll usually do a, a training session. Um, that's what our teacher relations team does. Um, so really that's focused on um, just like having a discussion about like what it means to be a teacher and just like what, you know, we're kind of looking for as far as um, not exactly like a rhetoric to follow when you're teaching, but more of like cert like some guidelines that might help you with like, you know, teaching your student. Um, mm -hmm. After that is done, then we usually pair um our students um and you know it's based off of like some requirements but um it's not nothing too bad <laughs> so if you're you're watching this and you're thinking like wow i want to join this cool program basically the main requirements we look for are like one you've got at least four more four semesters coming up at the school because we try to ask everybody to stay with their student for two years it's We've got a lot of reasons for that. It helps build the actual mentorship relationship. And two, we ask that you have played your instrument or done your musical thing for at least like three years, just so you have a solid basis of expertise to actually teach your student with. 
those are the main requirements. Like if you meet those and you think, wow, this is cool and I want to join, that's the exact kind of person we're looking for. Bonus gotcha. points if you play piano or guitar, because that's what we have a lot of students that want to learn piano and guitar. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, first learning guitar, we were, we were trying to find a teacher for a while uh, just because they were all like booked up because there's, you know, there's not that many guitar teachers and a lot of people that want to learn guitar. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know you already talked about like piano and guitar, but are there any other instruments that the club teaches? Is there like is there like a specific instrument, or is it just kind of like whatever you play will teach? <laughs> yeah. Um. So piano, guitar, and violin are are um, they're our most popular instruments that we teach. Um, and that's kind of true for a lot of the chapters at musical empowerment. But um, we also t have like a drum teacher. Um. I know that we had someone that was uh, playing the French horn for a while. Um, we, you know, it really just depends on what the student interest is. Um, and really, um, you know, we definitely try to find like an instrument for them. If like, if, if they express interest in it, then we'll find, you know, any means that we need to do to like get the instrument for them and to play that. So, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we've sure. got, we, we range mostly it's, like piano, guitar, the orchestra instruments and the band instruments. Um, we're maybe starting on some voice uh, lessons soon. We have a teacher for voice. And so we're starting to uh, hunt down students. The challenge is finding like, we've got people who play all of these cool instruments and finding students who want to learn bassoon is kind of hard, but <laughs> oh, yeah. that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um... I have a, another question in the chat, uh, more related to instruments. Uh, what instruments do you guys teach, like individually? Yeah, um, so I teach guitar. Um, I've been teaching guitar for uh, this is my fourth year teaching guitar, and it's been really awesome. So yeah. <laughs> I teach piano, so I've been playing piano for a while, and I started same time Madison is. So this is four years for me. Oh. Valerie, you want to chime in on this? Yes. <laughs> um, so I also teach piano. Um, so I started teaching piano um, last year. And I and we've seen my student Ming Ying. Um, so I really enjoy it. I feel my I feel myself growing um, each week uh, with my student. Um, so like him, I also have the opportunity to learn new material um, and apply that to my lessons, especially um, involving diverse composers and genres from around the world. Um, so we have been going through music from um, all types of different countries. Um, and so that's really fun too. Gotcha, yeah, that's super interesting. Um, okay, so we're while we're still talking about instruments, um, I read on your guys' website that you guys take instrument donations. Um, how, how does one like start with wanting to donate an instrument? Yeah. Um, so we have an instrument manager. Um, we have a separate email for him, but uh, usually we, um, you know, if it's kind of a, almost like a unspoken thing that like a lot of our donors just kind of like know about us. Um, <laughs> but um, usually it's just like through emails, uh, people are just, you know, off the one off chance that like someone's like, oh, like I have a piano that I wanna donate. It's like, oh, great. You know, let's make that work. Um, and also the really awesome thing that we're doing um, this year too is that um, all of our chapters are kind of like linked through um, a, like a website. Uh, so through this website, we like all see each other's instrument inventory. So if someone needs to like, you know, snag an instrument from national, um, we can do that. Or if we're like, you know, from UNC to us, it's like we can see everybody's instruments. So yeah, we never really run out of like a certain instrument, which is always good. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, that kind of leads into my next question. Um, I was I was gonna ask if you have any shortages of any like specific instruments, but I mean, if you <laughs> and if you 
sounds like you guys can borrow from, you know, from wherever you need to. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and honestly, some of the instruments we have, like, some of them we haven't, like, used in a while. Like, we have, like, some mandolins, like, you know, we haven't needed to use a mandolin in a while, so <laughs> we're hoping to find a teacher <laughs> that can play mandolin for sure. <laughs> I, I love that instrument. That instrument sounds so <laughs> yeah. yeah, Yeah, for sure. Uh, so where do you guys do most of your lessons? Is it all, like, in person? Is it all online? Is it at their house? Is it, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. So this goes from like, you know, way back when we did them all in person at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, which is like right down Hillsborough Street. Um, and that's where we would have them. COVID hit, people started doing them virtually. So some people still do them virtually. Some people do them all in person. We've opened that up again. Some people mix because sometimes you just can't make it, but you can make it up virtually. So all of that happens. For the virtual stuff, we just leave it up to the teachers. We give them as many resources as they can, but it's up to just what they want to do and how their student and their family will work. Um, but otherwise, we do them up at this church who has so graciously offered us a space and a piano and the ability to house all of our instruments. Gotcha. Yeah, that's awesome. So do they just like schedule um, like a session essentially, or is it like, do you have like weekly reoccurring meetings? Is it yeah, um, so we have a separate calendar for um, our lesson times. So uh, we shared like the staff with uh, the church on that just so they know like who's it gonna be in person. Um, and then also um, we just keep a log of like who's coming in and out and stuff, um, which has always been good or which is good for, you know, contact tracing, but also just for knowing who's gonna be here. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. Do you guys have any um, events like coming up or just like what do you guys usually do for events? That's a good question. <laughs> um, so uh, a lot of our events are geared towards um, kind of like building community within teachers. We're also trying to build community with our students as well. So um, usually what that looks like is at the end of every semester, we have a recital um, and that will take place also at the church. Um, and that's really just a way for students to um, just show off what they've been learning for the past semester. Um, but other than that, we have like our, uh, you know, throughout the semester, we'll have like, you know, a few events that like geared more towards like, like I said, building community. Um, I don't know, do y'all have any more like things to add for that? Yeah, so I mean, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we also, like Madison said, we have our teacher engagement events, um, so social events. Um, I, oh, yes. So <laughs> um, our last one, for example, was at Lucky Tree, which is this coffee shop on Hillsborough Street. Um, and they have an open mic night every second or fourth um, Monday of the month, and so um, us teachers, uh, we went there and <laughs> enjoyed some music, um, and we, well, um, we had the opportunity to perform if we, if we chose to, um, so it was really fun, and um, we plan those types of events um, each semester. Yeah. Another thing that happens uh, that I just remembered is we also have some meetings that happen like across chapters. So this happened last Wednesday, actually. We have a thing called an instrument meeting. And basically it's organized by the national organization. So that way all of the different chapters across the country can get together and ask any questions they have if they need help as a teacher or if they just want to talk about things. So I actually ended up talking with a bunch of folks from our UNC chapter about the history of musical empowerment because most of them were freshmen and sophomores and had only started in the world of COVID, which has been a bit different in musical empowerment. So we have those kind of events too, which are designed to like help you learn as a teacher and also just get to know other people outside of your, our little bubble at NC State. Gotcha. So when you guys do these events are like, especially for like the recitals, do you just have like a piano recital or like just like a guitar recital or is it just kind of like all conglomerate? <laughs> is it? Yes, all instruments are, um, are gonna be involved with that. Uh, 
you know, we try to be as inclusive as we can with that stuff. So, um, like as, as even for like this upcoming recital, like we'll have a piano on standby, but um, everyone's just going to bring their own instruments and just like show off what they've been doing. And sometimes the teacher joins in, sometimes they don't. Um, but yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, do you guys have any events coming up that you want to talk about? Or any for the end of the semester? <laughs> I think our recital will be right. Yep. <laughs> yes, our recital is going to be at Holy Trinity, Trinity Lutheran Church on November 20th at 3 p.m. So you're more than welcome to come out there if you're interested. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, we're kind of leaning towards a more quiet end of the semester, but we're definitely going to have more events um, coming up in the spring for sure. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it sounds like this club is like, oh, hold on. we got one in the chat uh, relating to events. Uh, it's asking how many students are going to perform at the end of the semester? Yeah, um, that really depends. Um, so we usually send out a form just for interest uh, for teachers because sometimes um, students sometimes won't like sometimes they don't want to do it uh, in, in a particular semester, which is totally fine. It's totally up to them. Um, I would say on average in the past, we've gotten about seven or eight people performing um, per recital. Uh, so hopefully we'll get around more the same of that for uh, this semester. And also since COVID, we've had the virtual recital, which is those videos we showed earlier. Yes. So that's organized by our national organization. So you can see a whole lot more of those from everybody from all the other chapters too. And so we'll have one of those too. Um, so if people don't want to come in person or can't make it in person, they can record themselves playing their piece in a video and send that off to National and they'll format that beautiful presentation that you just saw some. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like a, uh, like there's like a chapter recital and then there's like a national recital and then it's, there's in-person and virtual. Does that sound so right? Usually um, each chapter has their own recital. Um, Right now, uh, since COVID is like kind of still in impacting the way that we do that, um, some chapters are electing to do just a virtual recital. Um, some others, like ourselves, are going to do like a mix between um, you can send in a video or you can go to the in-person one. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad it's like all working out, you know, with COVID <laughs> and all that. I'm sure that was like a huge struggle for you guys. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, for sure. Um, just in general, how has being a part of the program like impacted you guys? Yeah, um, I guess I can start off. Um, I would say for me, um, my taste, or not my taste, but just like my love for music is just like grown like so much wider, like even though like I've already like came into it loving music so much, um, just because I think it's honestly just from what I've learned from my student as much as what they've learned from me. Um, you know, you build a rapport with the student and it's, you know, it's a twofold sort of deal where you're a teacher and a mentor. So like you get to know them, um, you know, personally. And of course, like you, as a teacher, you also get to like, get, you know, put them on the right track with music as well. But it's just, it's so nice to know that you're like being like, that person for them, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for me, on a, on a superficial level, what's changed is that I now know at least one song by One Direction. Um, <laughs> so that's changed. Uh, my student recently, over the past year or so, has been getting into pop music. So we've been working on learning how to play that. And her taste in pop music is like, one Direction and Olivia Rodrigo. So I've been learning that little universe, which has been very fun. Um, <laughs> but on a deeper level, like, you know, I, like, I, I, I really, I love music. It's fun and it's been cool to, you know, do it on my own. But now it's like, I can share the things I've learned and things I've learned with somebody else. And in the process, uh, my student will come up with like all sorts of things I didn't notice about the music. Or, on the other case, music I didn't know about um, because I just haven't listened to Olivia Rodrigo yet. Um, <laughs> and now I have. 
Oh yeah, no, for sure. Olivia Rodrigo is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to go ahead, Valerie, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, um, so kind of exactly like Benjamin and Madison said, um, I also, I'm growing constantly with my students um, and learning to use different resources. So um, my lessons take place virtually and it's given me a lot of freedom to, to show videos, show performances, find different websites to incorporate into my lessons um, and we also have the option to see each other. So I feel like it's really immersive and rich. Um, and um, I, I also <laughs> feel like musical empowerment has given me a little niche in the community, um, both with the leadership team and then also national um, just being able to communicate with people from different levels and having this new family um, in within Raleigh, it's actually incredibly magical. And so I, yeah, I, I really enjoy my time um, in the musical environment. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I really like the uh, the communal aspect that like clubs and even just like music in general can bring people. It's super, it's super empowering and inspiring. Um, and I also like how you guys like said that you're learning more about music, like while the while the student is learning more about music. I, I find that really interesting. It's it's super cool. Um, I think I already know Ben's answer to this. I think it's gonna be Olivia Rodrigo. But what are your guys' favorite songs to teach? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I guess if you want to go first, Valerie, I need to think about this. <laughs> um, so, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Fear Leaves is my favorite piece. Um, <clears throat> so we're currently working on Fear Leaves right now. Um, and it was, I just remember first learning it when I was a child and thinking that I was advanced um <laughs> I was I just really it's one of the most popular classical songs um in history and so being able to teach it um and in a way that is creative and enriching and new is is exciting um so yeah yeah um okay uh so I guess for me um I like teaching um i like teaching in the hall of the mountain king that's kind of a fun fun one um <laughs> like it's just like one of those like songs that you just can kind of like you know just groove to and um you know the students always like just appreciate like hearing it they're like oh yeah like i know that song kind of thing so that's always fun <laughs> that's awesome yeah for me, I'm going to have to say, not Olivia Rodrigo, it's actually the One Direction piece. So we've been doing <laughs> Fool's Gold by One Direction. And the cool thing about it is, like, the lyrics are, like, if you put them in a completely different context, would be very kind of dark and gloomy, but it's still just <laughs> such an upbeat, happy song. It's such an interesting presentation. So we've been able to talk about that emotional contrast between, like, the actual content of the lyrics and the way it's presented and talk about how we can put that into the way we play things on the piano. So that's been really fun to look into. Um, there's a fair bit of that in Trader too, because it's also major key. It's the same for chord progression as Wagon Wheel, but it's about a breakup. So that's that's something we've been able to dive into. So that is kind of fun. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> super interesting. I actually did, um, I did a high school uh, project my sophomore year on like the psychology of music and like uh, like music and film specifically and i played music over like um like sad scenes and it was all like in major keys like super happy and i just found that, that really interesting that like that contrast like it creates in our minds like this like it makes us enjoy it more um i think mm -hmm. it's really cool um all right now i've got to ask you guys what is your guys's favorite songs to play in general like just for you guys Oh, yeah, y'all can go ahead again. I need to think about this again. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go for this one. So the secret is for the past like four years, 
I haven't really spent the time to commit to actually learning a piece. So what I do is I just improvise. I'll just like sit down at the keyboard and start throwing my hands on the keys. And like, I've done it so much that I've just developed a feel for like, ah, oh, this movement's going to sound okay. And then I just play a wrong note and I'll just keep doubling down on it and say, hey, that's what I meant to do actually. And I'll just make that the new song. And that's what I do now. There's no wrong notes, just like songs you didn't expect to hear yet. It's like Bob uh, Ross painting, but musically. That's what I love to do. Oh, uh, yeah. And I think uh, one of my favorite artists, uh, Jacob Collier, said something like, there's, oh you know, uh, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no wrong notes. It's just, you know, you're just not confident. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that quote. Um, you can go ahead if you're ready. Or Valerie, either or. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so for me, I, I really like, um, anything by Chopin, um, so Nocturne in E minor, um, some of his waltzes, those are, I think, my, my favorite pieces, <clears throat> um, until then, yeah, what about you, Madison? Yeah, um, so I like playing a lot of, so my favorite band is Radiohead. So I love a lot of their pieces. <laughs> um, I have also actually learning, um, oh gosh, I don't know how to say this. Um, Reverie by uh, Debussy. Debussy? Debussy, yeah. Debussy. Debussy. <laughs> um, yes, so I'm learning that piece, which is like, it's probably one of my favorite classical pieces. So I'm actually learning that on piano right now. Um, and it's been a lot of fun <laughs> like doing that. Um, but yeah, like Radiohead, it's great. Like all their discography really i do it on piano and guitar <laughs> oh yeah no for sure my um my favorite piano piece ever is actually prelude in e minor by the or chopin um i, That's I literally piece. like yeah that is that yeah piece. that is my favorite piano piece ever and uh coincidentally one of my favorite songs ever is high and dry by radiohead so nice <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to dirt out about music but yeah yes um, oh yeah sure. um i don't know if you guys have heard of um the song fantasy impromptu um by Chopin but that is that that is what I am currently learning or in the process of learning um and I'm I am excited it's one of my dreams to to play that song yeah oh yeah fun fact about that one uh so for my piano student on the keyboard she has that's the demo song and so sometimes she'll <laughs> when we were doing virtual lessons, we'd be like, hey, check out what I learned how to do and like start the demo and just like wave her hands over the keys while it's playing. And so I'm like, oh my word, I've got the music to that. So I started to learn it and then I realized like, wow, this is hard. So I know about like the first four measures, which is the easy part. And then I gave up. So like, congrats on you for actually pulling through with it. And if you actually do it, I think my student would love to see it because it's a really impressive piece. Oh, yeah, for sure. okay. that's the one that's like super fast in the right hand right like it's the it's super fast yeah. in both yeah, hands it it's really just crazy <laughs> for sure yeah all right well um i think that's pretty much all that i have are there any more questions from people in the chat i'll give it a second to catch up <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. Um, that was a lot of fun. I feel like I learned a lot more about the club and uh, I'm sure that the viewers did too. Yes, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that was really fun. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, I hope you all have a great day. And um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Just thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, this is Alrighty. awesome. Yeah. All right. Yes. Alrighty. Bye. And later. Thank <laughs> you.